stupid partner should know what I like, and that's what their, the partner is thinking too. It's like, good luck with that, because no, they don't have a clue, especially if they're men, they don't have a clue. <laughs> so you have to tell them what you want and how they could deliver it, and vice versa, which is very awkward and horrible. And then you have to practice it for six months. And then if you do that, it's like, poof, you got it for the rest of your life. Why I be in this relationship? Well, that's a big problem, because you actually don't know. How much conflict should you have before you shouldn't be in a relationship? And the answer to that is, well, you don't know. You're having an argument with your partner and you say, you're a stupid person and you've always been a stupid person. And as far as I can tell, as far into the future as I can see, you're going to remain a stupid person. So what are they supposed to do? What are they going to do when you say that? They're going to cry, like if you mean it. They're going to get angry, if you mean it. And they're not going to like you very much. And why is that? Well, it's like, it's, it's assault, basically. The only way, really, the only thing that you can do in a situation like that is walk away, ignore it, respond in kind, or it degenerates into violence. That's it. Because there's no discussion. You haven't left the person anywhere to go. You've gone right to the top of their hierarchy and said everything about you is wrong and worse than that all the mechanisms that we could use to correct it won't work so those are fighting words so don't do that unless you want to have a fight so then you might say well what would you do instead and the answer is deliver the least amount of information you possibly can and so let's say you come home and your person is watching TV and you were kinda of hoping they'd greet you at the door you can't, you shouldn't break down into tears and say you're a stupid person, you've always been a stupid person and you're going to be a stupid person in the future. You should say, I have this peculiarity and that is that when I come home, I don't have enough confidence to just be happy. I would like you to come and say, just shut the TV off for two minutes, come to the front door and say, hello, and then you can go back and watch your TV. Would it be okay if you did that? And they'll think, well, you'll have to pay for it somehow, <laughs> but then they'll, they'll probably do it. And so, but the thing is, is you got to specify the routine that you want transformed at the highest possible level of resolution. And you want to, you want to recommend the minimal necessary change that will satisfy you. So you can't say, if you loved me, you'd know how to greet me at the door. Ha, huh. not helpful because they're stupid. It's like, what do you want exactly? What would make you satisfied? And then you have to have your person like grudgingly practice that a few times and you have to let them do it very badly and also in a bad temper. And then you have to reward them for it. And then maybe three months later, they'll do it properly. So you need to know that because that's what people are like. It's very hard for them to learn new things and they're very resistant to it, but they're very responsive to reward. But people love reward and they love attention. People love attention more than anything else. And so, if you're, you watch through the day, and when your partner does something that's good, say, bam, that was good, or something like that, you can be inventive, and then they'll do it more. And if you do that a whole bunch, like for a year, they'll be doing things that are good for you just all the time. But you have to be patient, which is very annoying, and you have to suppress your response to only respond to negative things. You know, because what we know about the expectancy models is that a deviation from expectation produces a burst of negative emotions. You know, so you come home and the whole house is clean, but there's like, I don't know, the dog has shed on the rug or something and the person overlooked that. It's like, you're not going to see the clean house, you're going to see the rug with the dog fur on it. You're going to say, why didn't you clean up the rug with the dog fur and they're gonna say good luck getting me to clean up the house again and you know because the thing is is the exception stands out and what's done doesn't and the reason for that is you can just ignore what's done because it's done it doesn't get in your way so it gets invisible really quickly so you really got to watch that tendency one of the things Nietzsche said was that if you really want to punish someone you don't punish them when they do something wrong because they expect that. That's not a punishment. They expect that. They might even be relieved by it. You want to punish them when they do something right. Because then you'll really hurt them. And so that's something to think about. And you're, if you're in a relationship, man, if someone's done something right, do not punish them.
You do that two or three times and that's it. And you're not going to get them do, to do that anymore. So, judiciousness. Watch what they're doing. If something happens that good, that's good, notice it. And, you know, if they've done a bunch of things, don't concentrate on the things they did wrong. That's not smart. It, it's really hard on them, too. Like, it, this, in some sense, this sounds manipulative and selfish. It would be really nice if you could come home and the person would say, well, what did you do today? And you say, you know, here's a bunch of things I did. And they say, you, they say well, this looks really good, and that was great, and why don't you do some more of that? And you're like, oh, boy, it was a great day. And so, you know, you can train them to train you properly. And that's a really helpful thing, especially if you do it over a few years, you know, you can... That's how you have a good relationship, because you're both clueless as hell to begin with. And so you've got to figure these things out bit by bit, and then you have to inform each other, and then you have to be patient enough to let your partner do these things really badly. I'll, I'll give you another example. Sometimes, sometimes I, I see couples sporadically in my, in my clinical practice. I'm not a couples counselor. And so, but sometimes when I'm working with someone, there's an issue that needs to be discussed with, with both people, because otherwise it's just stupid. And one of the things I often recommend to people, especially once they have kids, is that they set aside, to use an anachronistic phrase, date, date nights. Well, so another thing, this is partly what B.F. Skinner figured out, so when he was training rats, and he wanted the rat to do something, one of the things he would do is he put, maybe he was going to train the rat to co climb a, a, a little ladder. And I mean, he could get rats to climb ladders and then climb across like the little monkey bars and then spin around three times and then, you know, whack a ball and then eat something. Like, he got incredibly complex behavior out of rats. And the way he did that was patience. So he put the ladder in the cage and the rat would just run around doing rat things. And then it would put its hand on the, on the first rung. And Skinner would give it a pellet. And so he did, you know, after even once, the rat's going to be like staying in the immediate vicinity of the ladder. And then it, the frequency with which it's going to go like this is just increased. So then it does it again. Bang, pellet. Well, soon the rat is just going like this, right? So then you wait until the rat tries the other hand. So you give it a pellet then. Well, then it's going like this. And then, because it's going to get bored, it'll go like this. It'll hit the next stair. Bang! You give it a pellet. Soon the rat's climbing and doing all the little things you want it to do. Now, the problem with that is you have to be patient. You have to wait till the rat does what you want. Okay, that's more relationship advice. Wait till the rat does what you want and then reward it. And it's unbelievably useful. And I, like, it's also extraordinarily positive. I mean, I'm being, you know, comical. It's, <laughs> insofar as I can manage that about the situation.